Today I want to talk to you about the ASR, the Accurate Stitch Regulator, on the Janome CM17. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and today we're going to be talking about the ASR, the Accurate Stitch Regulator, on the Janome CM17. I'm going to talk to you about what a stitch regulator is, and how it works, and how it works specifically on the Janome CM17. Now, when people are first starting off free motion quilting, they often ask me, how do I get my stitches to be the same length? Well, first off, there's a lot of other things you need to know before you get to worrying about that. However, with the ASR on this machine, you are able to get those nice, even stitches that everybody wants to have when they're free motion quilting. Now, not only can you do free motion quilting with the stitch regulator, you can also do ruler work with it too. And this is the only machine currently on the market that has a stitch regulator that works with a ruler foot. So that's just an added bonus in my mind. Okay, so, but today I'm focusing on the free motion quilting side of things. I will address how we use the ruler foot with the ASR in another video. But let's take a step back. Let's talk about what a stitch regulator is and how it operates. So, as I mentioned, a stitch regulator is a, an accessory, a device. Uh, sometimes it's totally separate from the machine. That works with the machine to give you those nice, even stitches. So, on the Janome CM17, you can set the length of the stitches you want when you're free motion quilting or ruler quilting. And then, the stitch regulator will give you that length and have each stitch the same length. But a stitch regulator is it works, I should say, with an optical sensor. They all work with some type of optical sensor. And you can think of that as like sort of an eye, maybe a camera. But on the Janome CM17, this is what it looks like. This is the accessory. This is the ASR right here in my hand. And I'm going to look at that a little closer in just a second with you. But if you turn it over, you'll see there's this little shiny part. It looks like film, like old fashioned film, right? To me is what it reminds me of. And that is that optical sensor. And what it does when it's on the machine, is it is reading how fast you are moving around your quilt sandwich. Because you know when you're free motion quilting or ruler quilting that you are the one moving the sandwich around. You're moving the fabric and then the machine is stitching, right? So what that optical sensor is doing is it's going, hmm, how fast is she moving that fabric around under the needle? And then it adjusts the speed of the needle, how fast the needle goes up and down to give you the stitch length you have programmed into the CM17, okay? Sounds a bit complicated maybe, but you'll once you understand how it works, it helps you to work with the ASR, okay? Because you have to know how your tools operate so you can work with them and get the results you want. Now, going back to the optical sensor just for a moment here. When you are working with this, sometimes it might get some lint on it and you need to clean it. All you need to use is a soft piece of fabric. Do not put any cleaners on it, you know, no Windex or anything like you'd put on a window, okay? This is not a window, it's a delicate piece of equipment. You just want to gently clean it off with a soft cloth, okay? And when you're working with this, um, there's several different settings on the machine that we're going to be working with as well. You can adjust the sensitivity of that optical sensor depending on how fast you like to move your fabric and also depending on the type of fabric you may be using, and I'll get to that in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about the feet that come with this. I mentioned a ruler foot, and you know right now we've got a free motion quilting foot on here. It's an open toe, as you can see, open at the front, but there's also a closed toe foot, okay? Like a little circle. And then here's your ruler foot that you can use for uh, on it as well. And let's talk about how to get these feet on the ASR. So you don't need a screwdriver to do that. It's very, very easy. There is a button on the back here, as you can see. So you push the button, and when you do that, you will be able to move whatever foot you have on down and just slide it off. It's that simple. So if I want to put on the ruler foot, for example, I am just going to slide it on till it hits that back stop, if you will. And then I'm just going to flip it up. You heard it snap, so you know it's in place. It's not going to come off, all right? So removal, and you, usually when I do that, it'll just drop down a bit, and you can take it off. Today, we're going to be working with free motion quilting feet, and I am going to work with the open toe. I like to work with open toe feet if I can, because it's uh, easier to see what I'm doing. So 
it's now on there. We now know how that optical sensor works. We know how to change our feet on it. We've got our open toe foot on there right now. The next thing you need to figure out is how do I attach this? Because it's not doing anything like this, right? So on the back of the machine, there is an area, there's a little uh, cover sort of that you can flip open and you'll see like a little hole, okay? And the little hole looks very similar to this. It corresponds with the little holes that you have in the end of the ASR. So you're just going to plug that into the back of the machine and then you need to attach it to the front of the machine. Just move this out of the way here for a second. Okay, just like you normally do with any foot. You're going to loosen your screw. You're going to put on here. You can see it's going to fit right in there and you're going to tighten the screw. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've got it on the machine and I always want to take my screwdriver. I do need my screwdriver here and just give it a little turn. Make sure it's nice and tight on there don't want your foot coming off partway through when you're stitching, right? Okay, so everything's plugged in, right? But there are also settings on the Janome CM17 you need to choose, just like when you're free motion quilting with the normal free motion quilting feet. You've got to choose that option on the machine. It needs to know what you're going to do. So what you do is you go to your home screen. You're going to choose the sewing application mode. You're going to go into the quilt mode like you would for free motion quilting, and then you're going to go into free motion. Okay, and you're going to choose the straight stay can't even say it, straight stitch three. That's a mouthful. And as you'll see at the bottom of the screen that there's the ASR button. So when you push the ASR button, you're going to see a change there. And you're going to see it suggests either the QC, the closed uh, free motion quilting foot, or the O, the open one. Okay, the ones that go with the uh, accurate stitch regulator. Now, I mentioned before that you can tell the machine what stitch length you want. Now, your default is 2.4. When you're free motion quilting, if you're doing really small, tight little areas, you want to have a shorter stitch length. If you're doing bigger ones, you can go up a little higher. So, I am just going to go right now up just a couple to maybe 2.6 so you can see things a little better. And if you need to adjust your tension, you can do that as well. So, I've got my machine threaded up with some uh, 40 weight polyester right now in the top and bobbin to do some stitching. Now, I also mentioned that you could do some sensitivity changes. We're not talking about sensitivity training here. We're talking about sensitivity changes on the machine, okay? So we're gonna start off just with the normal settings, okay? With the default settings on the machine. And then I'll see what results I get. So. Anytime you are quilting like this, free motion or ruler quilting, you want to do some practice before you get to your real project, right? In case you need to adjust tension, or in this case, adjust the sensitivity settings or even the stitch length, right? So we're going to just do our practice here. We're going to go down, bring our bobbin thread up. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera a little bit today, I know. Bring that in, take it down again. I like to lock my stitches, so I just use my stitch lock button, and it's just going to give me a few stitches, and I just go back and forth. But it, I, why I like to use that to lock off my stitches when I'm free motion quilting is because it goes up and down very slowly. So I don't have to hurry up with it. Okay, so here we go. Lock our stitches. Okay, now we're ready to start. <gasps> Big breath in and out, right? Okay, so just whatever. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get you to listen because there is an overspeed warning and you heard that, that did it. Okay, that's telling me I'm going a little too fast for the settings I have right now. And that would be the sensitivity setting we're talking about here on the stitch regulator right now. Okay, so I need to slow down a bit or I can change my settings. So let's see here. Okay, I've slowed down a little bit. You didn't hear any beep, 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 so it seems to be happy with me. Just going to cut my thread for a minute here so we can move over and just see our stitches. So um, I don't know whether you can see them on the overhead camera really well or whether up front here is easier for you to see, but they look pretty darn even to me. And those are small stitches, right? So it looks like it's working quite well, not having too many problems. So let's go back again. Let's just start here. Another area. Okay, and I'm not going to lock my stitches here because we're just practicing, we're just demoing here, so let's see. Okay. You can hear it squealing at me. So when it's squealing, it's telling me I'm going too fast. It also may be telling me, it probably is, that my stitch length may not be as even as I'd like to have it because I'm 
you know, I'm not working cooperatively with the optical sensor. Okay, I'm going too fast for it to see what I'm doing and it can't keep up. That's really what's happening there. So I may need to make some changes. So if I find that I am going too fast for the stitch regulator, I'm a fast free motion quilter, then I need to decrease the sensitivity. So let me explain where that is. You're going to go into your settings. You're going to go into the second area at the top, the quilt area, and you're going to go to page three. And you're going to see ASR sensitivity. You also see the overspeed warning. You can turn that off if you want. I suggest you leave it on because you want to know if things aren't working right. Okay, <laughs> you want to know and you want to adjust so that you get the results you want, those nice even stitches, right? So, but you can see the sensitivity, it's at zero. So I'm going a little too fast for the stitch regulator. So I'm going to take it down. I'm going to go down to about minus four and see what that does. Okay, let's see how we do. It's still chirping a bit. Okay, every so often, but my stitches are still looking pretty good. So I may have to play with that a little bit. So this is what I'm saying. You have to play with the sensitivity a bit. Now, if I'm going really slow or if I'm finding my stitch lengths are uneven, and that can happen if you're working on some different type of uh, fabric that has a nap to it. So if you were working on corduroy or velvet or even minky, let's say, something like that, a fleece, you may find that your stitch lengths aren't, stitch length is not even. And what you need to do then is you need to increase the sensitivity, okay? So let me go back to my settings for just a second here. And let's see if I can get this to where I want it to be. It's looking pretty good, actually. I mean, it's beacon off at me, but it's, it's looking pretty good. So let me just adjust and go down a little bit more. Push OK. And if you're used to free motion quilting without a stitch regulator, you have to remember that this does not start until you start moving the fabric, okay? I can push my foot pedal down and it's just going to go up and down just very slowly. It's not going to speed up or do anything like it normally would when you are just piecing. You know, you push your foot, push your foot pedal down and it's going to go, wee, you know, here it's not. It's just going to go very slowly up and down, okay? What gets the stitch regulator working is me moving the fabric. Remember, optical sensor reading the fabric movement. Okay. Well, there was just a little beep there, so I went down to minus five. That seems to be doing a little bit better for it. So it's a matter of playing around a little bit okay people think that stitch regulators are just you just throw them on the machine and you just go and away you go no like any other tool it's a tool okay any other notion you have to know how to work with it to get the results you want okay so something else i wanted to mention to you when you're using this and so play around with it right you've got to play around with it practice get it the way you want and then you can do your project so it gives you really nice results you can see how nice that looks right look at those nice even stitches loving that and I don't have to think about it or worry about it. You know, what's my stitch length doing? What's everything else doing, right? Um, so you can adjust your stitch length, right? Like you normally would do. You can increase and decrease your speed too on the machine if you want to, um, till it's where it's comfortable. And the other thing I wanted to mention to you though, is that you, as you, you may or may not know this, <laughs> okay? Cause you've got a foot pedal with this machine, but you don't have to use the foot pedal on the machine. Okay, you can disconnect the foot pedal and use your stop, start and stop button. And then things operate just a little bit differently when you do that. So let me explain how that works. So we've been using the foot pedal. Okay, so when I take my foot off the foot pedal, the machine stops. You saw that, right? But if I disconnect the foot pedal and I work with the start stop button, it operates just a little bit differently in kind of what we call a cruise mode, if you're familiar with, with that term. And what that means is that we are just going to, and it takes me a second because my foot always wants, I'm used to working with my foot pedal. But what happens is we're gonna move along here and get this going. Make sure I got all my settings here. Okay, see what's happening here? When I stop moving the fabric, my needle is still going down, up and down, okay? That's cruise, okay? But. Okay, 
And now I've stopped moving the fabric, but that needle's still going up and down until I push the start stop button again. Okay, so depending on how you want to work with the ASR, you have some different options, you have different settings, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I'm just going to take this out now. And you can even use it with or without the foot pedal to get different results. So if you have ever used a long arm machine, you know that there are some different settings. Precision is what we're going to call the one where the needle just stops in the fat. I've got set to stop in the fabric when I release my foot off the foot pedal. But if you like this cruise mode where it's still going up and down, maybe you're doing something very tiny, very intricate, and you just want to move really, really slowly, and then you want to stop and have it you know, go up and down a couple of times, maybe you're making those sharp points and you want it to go up and down a couple of times before you move on, you can get that cruise mode by disconnecting your foot pedal and using the start stop button on the machine. Before I go today, I just wanted to point out to you that you will see an icon underneath my video that you may not have noticed before. It's a heart with a dollar sign in it. And that is your chance to support the Chatterbox Quills channel. For as little as $2, you can donate to help me buy the items I use in my videos to keep creating free video videos for you. So if you would like to support us that way, you can just hit that button and donate the amount that works for you. Thank you so much for your support. Now I've talked about the accurate stitch regulator on the Janome CM17, but you might be wondering what else this machine can do. Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. Check out this video for more information on the Janome CM17. For more helpful quilting information, be sure to go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.